Morning, Deputy Mayor, Councillors, CEO, Directors, and uh, welcome to this council meeting. The traditional custodians of the land on which we are privileged to call home and meet today, the Yui people, represent a human link dating back over 2,000 generations. We pay our respects to the elders, past and present, and those emerging, and recognise their continuing connection to our land and our community. And as you know, social distancing rules still prevent us from having public participation in our council meetings, but we welcome our online viewers through our live streaming on Facebook and our YouTube channel. Declare open this meeting of the Mackay Regional Council and invite the Reverend John McKim to uh, lead us in prayer this morning. Reverend John, thank you very much. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, as we move through a difficult time in our nation's life, with issues surrounding the pandemic and the economic hardship that many are having to endure, are blessed, we are blessed in our community that reaches out and cares for one another. And so today we come before you to give thanks for our region, to pray for all those who live, work and spend their retirement years here, for those who are still able to travel through and and enjoy the beauty of what our region has to offer. Today we pray for our Mayor, Greg Williamson, and for each councillor, that you may give them a spirit of wisdom, love, peace, responsibility and justice. We pray that this council, together with all its officers and staff, may faithfully serve our community in their various portfolios to promote the well-being of all. We pray for the various deliberations and decisions that are made today. We pray that those decisions will empower growth and equity among all, create a more enjoyable leisure environment, will enable all our businesses and community groups to flourish and grow and create a safer place to live. This time we also remember those who have suffered loss because of the pandemic. And we pray for our first responders and other volunteers who are trying to bring healing and hope to so many. In our region, we have so much to be grateful for, and we give thanks for the many blessings and achievements that have benefited the people and organisations in our community. Today, we offer our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend John. Okay, so, councillors, there's nobody absent on council business. No apologies today. Uh, condolences? Anybody have condolences to offer? No condolences. <coughs> Anybody to declare a conflict of interest or any item on the agenda? No conflicts. Minutes of the meeting of the 8th of July have been circulated. Would somebody like to move that uh, they be adopted? Councillor Mann moves, Councillor Green seconds. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. There'll be no business arising as we've been advised. There's no mayoral minutes. Let's move on to the committee reports and recommendations. 10.1, the draft minutes of the Character and Heritage Advisory Committee held on the uh, 20th. 6th of June. Councillor Mann moves. Is there a seconder? Second. Councillor Hassan seconds. Councillor Mann. Thank you, Worship. Um, so it was our first uh, meeting post-election. There was a very full agenda to consider. We discussed the Serena Air Raid Shelter and some funding that Council had applied for, which, in which ended up being unsuccessful. But the work put into that grant application will be beneficial for future grant funding rounds. Um, a heritage trail workshop scheduled for early in the year had to be cancelled, but staff are now working on three digital trials, which, is, which I find very interesting, <coughs> actually, and it'll cover the city centre, uh, Serena and Pioneer Valley. Um, the first draft's going to be available for us to have a look at at the next Character and Heritage Advisory Committee meeting, and I'd like to mention our senior planner, Dylan Brown, for the amount of work and effort that he's put into not only the trail, but the, the Character and Heritage Advisory Committee. Uh, we did talk about the Commonwealth Bank building and lack of any action in terms of restoration, um, and it's very distressing and disheartening to see it in the state that it's in. Um, I also wanted to just touch on the terms of reference, which are part of this motion too. Um, we did amend them slightly so that they allow for a mix of committee members uh, who can represent diversity and historical and cultural heritage within our region. Um, so that the committee um, achieves its strategic role and intent, and that's very important for the strategic outcomes to happen. Um, 
So in terms of this recommendation, I just wanted to highlight that um, the Character and Heritage Advisory have asked um, Maco Regional Council to write to the Department of Environment and Science and to the property owners to express the Council's concerns at the former Commonwealth Bank building renovation um, project that is still not recommenced. Thank you very much, Councilman. Speaker against? Any other speakers? I'll put the motion for adoption. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Thank you, Councillor Mayor. The draft minutes of the Sustainability and Environment Advisory Committee held on the 26th of June. Councillor May moves. Seconded by Councillor Jones. Councillor May. Thank you very much, Your Worship. This was the um, first meeting of the um, Sustainability and Environment Committee with um, the new council. And we welcomed Councillor uh, Alison Jones as the Deputy Chair, myself as the Chair, and Councillor Mich Michelle Green as a councillor on that um, committee as well. We also had a look at the terms of reference and revised them slightly to include uh, a further industrial um, a place there for uh, community, and uh, that was taken up by the Dalrymple Bay Coal Terminal representative. So we had a really good meeting. We, we presented... Um, North Queensland Bulk Ports presented their sustainability uh, pro, uh, committee um, strategy, sorry, and, and that was well received by the committee. We also had an update from our officers in regards to the, um, our sustainability strategy and the progress that's being made on that, and there's a further uh, presentation to come to the next meeting as well. All of the members that were present, and, and all committee members were present at the meeting, um, felt that it was very important that industry, um, private enterprise, get together along with council to talk about the region's um, sustainability and environment as a whole. So that was really good. Like I said, there's just a few uh, slight amendments to the terms of reference in regards to the membership, um, the addition of the director of um, development services being added to the membership as well. So we've got a good range of council representatives and um, business industry uh, representatives as well. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor May. Speaker against? Any other speakers? I'll put the motion for adoption. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. Thank you. Draft minutes of the Visual Arts Advisory Committee of the 22nd of June. Councillor Townsend moves. Councillor Engel. Councillor Engel, you second? Thank you very much. Councillor Townsend. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it was my pleasure as um, my first to um, chair the first VAC meeting on the 22nd of June. Um, the highlight for me so far was attending the Libris Awards on the 13th of July, which showcased some amazing entries from around Australia. Unfortunately, COVID restrictions demanded that we limit the amount of guests attending. However, technology is an amazing thing, and we were able to live stream the event which was watched by 723 viewers, which I think is a pretty outstanding wow. result. Um, I'd like to thank um, and congratulate our director, Tracy Heathwood, and her staff and dedication in making the Libris Awards such a successful event. Um, as I said, this is my first stint on this committee, and Mackay should be very, very proud of art space and the facilities and, and the, the um, displays there. And I would, I'm really looking forward to the next events over the four years. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Townsend. Speaker against? <coughs> Any other speakers? I'll put the motion for adoption. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Thank you. Right, uh, so we move on now to correspondence and officers' report. Uh, the Office of the Mayor and CEO. Council report for the 2021 Mackay Show holiday. Of course, this is the first time we've uh, been able to bring this to, uh, to Council after the adoption by the State. Are there any questions? No questions? Somebody would like to move its adoption? Councillor Green, Councillor Bonaventura seconds. Councillor Green? Okay, I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Why did you... <laughs> I was going to speak to it, Your Worship, to, uh, but that's fine. To... Pass. Okay. I'll uh, put the motion again. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Thank you. 11.1.2 is the adoption of council policies. Um, and this is uh, an amendment that was laid on the table. It's been circulated. There have been, uh, there have been questions answered. Uh, I don't know whether there's any questions right now. No questions right now. 
So it's back to Council for adoption right now. Would somebody like to move? Councillor Jones moves. Second by <laughs> Councillor Bonaventura. Councillor Jones. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, while I would have liked to have seen more changes in this policy, um, I would like to thank the Executive Officer for his help um, in certainly clarifying and finalising policy for everybody's consideration today. The policy is certainly much easier to understand and it's aligned with the headings of our, um, our next annual report. Um, and the community will be able to um, see what councillors, or what as we as councillors, spend clearly uh, above and beyond our annual remuneration. I ask that councillors support this motion in uh, being more open and tr transparent to our community today. And I, um, I'd just like to uh, reflect on a, a, something that Councillor Englert said in a previous meeting, that this is a living document. Um, we can improve um, it if we want to by uh, moving a motion. It can be done at any time. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Jones. Speaker against. Any other speakers? Councillor Bonaventura speaking for. Thank you, Your Worship. <coughs> I'd just like to thank Councillor Jones for taking us on this journey. <coughs> and I think it's important that we do our best to accurately report our expenses. And these changes will go a long way to alleviating uh, some of the discrepancies that often have been raised with me over the years. Um, and I think this is a good step forward. And uh, I'm happy to support the motion, Your Worship. Thank you very much, <coughs> Councillor Bonaventura. Councillor Englert speaking for? Yes, Your Worship. Um, this is a great step forward. As, as you know, in the last term, we did a lot of work towards making sure that this council is transparent. This is, uh, there's no harm in this. This actually, um, this, as, as, um, as, as was stated, uh, you know, council expenditure. And we've come a long way since 2012 when councillor expenditures weren't actually listed. They were buried in other departmental um, uh, budgets. So great steps forward and I encourage the council to, to continue to do anything they can to ensure transparency for the people. Thank you very much, Councillor Englert. Any other speakers? Put the motion, those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried unanimously, thank you. 11.1.3 is the council report from the Northern Alliance of Councils. It's, uh, it's the conference motion now. It's fairly well straightforward, pretty easy to read. Are there any questions? Somebody would like to move then that uh, we adopt the officer's recommendation. Councillor Bella moves. Councillor Bonaventura seconds. Councillor Bell. <coughs> the idea of this motion is probably a little bit more subtle than um, some might imagine. For quite a while, um, what we've seen and the trigger for this was the, the uh, Pew Foundation approach where they wanted um, some money from government for, uh, to be used as environmental stimulus. When you looked at the things they were purporting to do, they were all, all in the whole, um, activities that council should um, have under its responsibility. Councils have greater governance uh, or better governance um, we see with some of our NRM groups um, duplications in administration costs and less money getting on the ground. The idea of this motion is that we actually lobby government to um, be the first, the local government be the first port of call. So when it comes to activities within our region, we should have so sovereignty and primacy of consideration. So, and what this would facilitate is an alignment of objectives. Um, I've had conversations with both the Deputy Prime Minister and the, um, the Federal Minister for Local Government along these lines and they were quite surprised in that they kind of thought that we went along with the idea of I'll let the other mobs do it. But I think we should be actually someone that is consulted as to what needs to be done in our area, our area and whether we can do it and get more money on the ground um, along the lines of our own ob objectives as such. Thank you. Thanks. Councillor Bella, speaker against. Any other speakers? Councillor Bonaventura, speaking for. <coughs> yes, you would. Um, look, I'm happy to support Councillor Bella on, on this motion, and I believe it has a great deal of merit, especially when you read the positives in the section uh, under desired outcomes. It, it's easy to see the benefits. <coughs> and this could bring our region and other councils within the Northern Alliance of Councils. Um, and as our rep on the Northern Alliance Councils, I ask Councillor Ballader to strongly push this when he is uh, in the area and, and that motion is being debated. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Bonaventure. Any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? 
Any against? The motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Motions for the 2020 LGAQ conference. Uh, there's two motions suggested for us here. Uh, once again, we've circulated this agenda. We've had no questions come back to us on these. Are there questions to be raised today? Would somebody like to move? Did you want a question? Oh, just a little you? typo, and I've sent it to the CEO if you wouldn't mind. Thinking typo? About yes. Yeah. I think we put those in deliberately. Don't we? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you picked it up, Councillor Bowman. Thank you. Uh, are there no other questions? Would somebody like to move the adoption? Councillor Mann moves, seconded okay. by Councillor May. Councillor Mann. Thank you, Worship. Um, look, there's two motions uh, which I support, but I want to speak about motion two, which is one that I put forward. Um, in April, I brought a notified motion to Council for um, asking for endorsement to lobby the, uh, trust the LGAQ to lobby the state government in terms of implementing electronic counting. Um, so this is the way to do it, I guess, too, to bring it forward at the LGAQ conference. And given that the labour costs alone for the last election were $400,000, surely electronic counting is much more efficient in terms of cost and in terms of how quickly we'll get a result. So I'm really um, happy to put forward these motions. Thank you. Speaker against? Are there any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. So let's move on now to our uh, reports and 11.2.1, the Development Services Monthly Review for June 2020. Director. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, the Development Services, sorry, Development Services ended the financial year on a high with development activity remaining strong and the value of operational work significantly higher compared to this time last year. The independent report on industrial land supply is starting to take shape with consultation undertaken with stakeholders and a draft report imminent. A briefing will be held with councillors on this report in the next few weeks. We have also received the draft uh, Mackay Region Transport Strategy and it's currently undergoing internal review in preparation for future consultation, which is planned for the second half of 2020. Our natural environment team have also been busy installing new aeration devices at the goose ponds to Oxen, Oxen Jake. I'm sorry, I can't say that word properly, sorry, the water, <laughs> and prevent fish kills. They also ran the popular free plant giveaway, utilising a new click and collect system to ensure social distancing and with COVID safe measures in place. The renewal of play equipment at Northview Park is complete. Um, I think everyone would have seen this. It's been very popular and a welcome refresh of this important district park. And the Serena Sugar Shed reopened on the 15th of June after a period of shutdown due to COVID-19 restrictions. The facility is operating in accordance with COVID safe requirements and we've been really pleased with the level of visitation and we've actually had to increase the number of tours to accommodate the demand. Thank you, Director. Questions for the Director? You'll get off lightly this morning. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks very much, Director. Would somebody like to move the uh, report's adoption? Councillor Englert moves, seconded by Councillor Hassan. Councillor Englert. Thank you, Worship. I just uh, looked up on the thesaurus uh, and an alternative for oxygenate, which you, uh, the director could have said bubbles in the water. <laughs> um, but with all due respect to the director and, and CEO, man, how boring was the operational aspect of this report? I mean, uh, the budget's in surplus. Performance uh, is above legislative timeframes. All projects on target bar one, which is an external issue. Thankfully, there's a few aspects to the report that make it more interesting, and that is that we will be travelling to Finchatton and Yungla to, uh, to uh, consult with the people of those areas about um, the mountain bike um, uh, trailhead at Finchatton, so they've been looking forward to that for some time. Um, we, there's also been expression of interest put out for the beach horse races, and if we, uh, with the six uh, organisations interested in that, it would be really great for the region to get that event back here. And also, interestingly, that you know, um, over the years we've had a lack of tertiary support, and, and we're, we're engaged with uh, our resource uh, sector to, uh, and working with universities to ensure that we might uh, be able to get some initial tertiary training in the Resource Centre of Excellence. Um, a lot of things are still um, on hold due to COVID. Um, the last thing I'll add is that there's an application approved for Havana for uh, rural residential lots, 13 of them, so that's great for the building industry as well. Thank the CEO and Director for a boring but still slightly interesting report. Thank you very much, Councillor Englert. Speaker against? Any other speakers? Councillor Green, speaking for. Yeah. Thank you, Your Worship. I wish to speak to two project items in this report. 
First is the Mackay Festival sessions. I continue to be impressed by the ability of council to adapt, innovate and think outside the box to provide community engagement opportunities that are so vital in these capricious COVID times. Uh, all festivals could simply have been postponed until 2021, but instead the Mackay Festivals team has come up with something called, really exciting called the Mackay Festival Sessions. So each night in uh, Saturday night in August, beginning at 6pm, there will be local performances from bands, dance groups and even mural artists that will be uh, streamed live from the MEC. Added to this, the MEC will promote local businesses during the live events to enable them to engage new customers and grow their businesses. So if you are a local business owner, and think it's a great opportunity. Council's continually engaging with businesses during July for the August events. Limited tickets to the performances will be available. But as to the rest of us, I challenge you to create a Mackay Festival Sessions Party, serving only locally sourced food and beverages. The other thing I would like to speak about uh, is split spaces. Uh, Mackay Regional Council supports and facilitates investment in emerging industries and opportunities for diversification. And a great example of this is the Split Spaces Startup On-Ramp Pre-Accelerator Program. It's a 12-week program run by Split Spaces for startup founders who are early in their startup journey. The program has three core components including workshops, one-on-one -on -one meetups and a pitch night in which all participants learn and share their learning with fellow entrepreneurs. The pitch and graduation night for round one was held on the 26th of June and Councillor Hassan and I tuned in via Zoom and we enjoyed an evening of pitches from six businesses and these included things such as innovative cooling systems for RVs, fatigue management programs for mining companies and even personal biography books for loved ones. Round two of this program begins next Tuesday. And other upcoming programs include the Startup Activation Program beginning the 27th of July and interestingly and excitingly, the STEM Punks Program for youth aged 8 to 15 beginning in August. So I'm so impressed by the diversity and the quality of the programs launched by Split Spaces and I encourage schools, business and startup founders to check, out, to check them out online or go and see them in person at the City C, um, CQ campus. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Green. Are there any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Oh, sorry, Councillor May. No, right. right. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. Thank you. 11.2.2, the facilitating development in the Mackay Region Policy Greaterwood Sunday Distillery. And uh, it's a material change of use. Uh, it's a small application of $2,900. Are there any questions around this? Fairly well straightforward. Do you have a question, yeah, Councillor? Just just one question, Your Worship, in regards to the um, employment generation. Yeah. It's um, stated in the report that Council's economic modelling didn't indicate that there would be any direct or indirect jobs during the construction, and the applicant has, has advised differently. And I'm just wondering how um, we've come to that, um, you know, that modelling indicated that. Mm, good question. CEO, can you answer that? Director. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll have to take that on notice. Um, I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. Mm -hmm. right. Looking back to you. Deputy That's okay. okay. Yeah, right. See, uh, I, might, I might say, well, uh, the director will come back to you. I mean, the model, the, the, the form is quite black and white. Our process is quite black and white. So we're plugging the numbers. There's very little discretion in it. So it'll just be about where those thresholds are in that. So we don't give okay. it discretion. It's quite um, mm. rigid, Councillor May. So I'm sure it might be the threshold value of it or something, but I'm sure the director can explain it. But it's very black and white. Yeah, no it doesn't mean it's always right, but it's quite rigid. And, yeah. and it's, a, it's a good question, because yeah. we yeah. said there's no, no yeah. jobs. The, the applicant yeah. said there's eight. Yeah. yeah. So there's got to be some sort of a, an yeah. explanation to it. All right, thank you. Are there other questions? No other questions? Would somebody like to move uh, the adoption of the facilitating development uh, recommendation at 11.2.2? Councillor Bonaventura moves. Councillor Englert seconds. Councillor Bonaventura. I'll just quickly, Your Worship, to me this is what our facilitating development policy is all about. Uh, little niche businesses in the tourism sector outside our, our, our uh, main city centre. So this is out in the rural areas. This brings uh, development out into those areas. It's a niche business and I for one will certainly be keen to trial uh, some of the uh, drop when it's uh, up and running. So thank you, Your Thank you. I thought you were going to mention alcohol right at the start there, Councillor <laughs> Bonaventure. Thank you very much. Uh, other speakers? Speaker against? Any other speakers? Speaking for Councillor England. Thank you, Your Worship. There's alcohol involved, so I'll, I'll speak to it. Um, uh, to back up, Councillor Bonaventure, exactly what the facilitating development um, 
initiative is uh, designed for. It'll give the uh, it's a diversification of farming in that area, so it'll give the farm an alternative alternative income, promote rural and environmental edu education, and increase tourism. People search for these sorts of things, and I'm particularly interested that they intend to use local fruits and florals to create their own independent gin. And as a whiskey drinker myself, particularly fond of the 16-year-old Langabulan single malt Scotch whiskey, I look forward to, as Councillor Bonaventura, to sampling the uh, localised gin with possibly some pepper berries and a twist of uh, orange rind. <laughs> right. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor English. Are there any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Unanimously, thank you. Let's move on now to uh, reports. Engineering and commercial infrastructure at uh, 3.1, the ECI report for waste services for the month of June. Director. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, firstly, I'd just like to highlight the uh, safety outcome for waste. So again, um, good performance, a small team, but they're now well over five years without an LTI, so that's a fantastic outcome. Uh, Hogan's Pockets tonnages are up. It sort of corresponds to a similar period in uh, last June, but uh, municipal waste and commercial and industrial waste are the highest we've seen for the last 12 months. So again, that's a good indicator we're starting to see the economy come back in relation to uh, waste tonnages. Um, very pleasing to, to have the launch of Discover Mackay on our waste truck. So um, we're starting to do a rollout now. I think we've got four done with about another six to go. So they'll come out in the ensuing weeks, but a great campaign. So uh, wonderful to see that being rolled out. Um, just to recognise again, JJ Richards, so only 34 bins missed out of 240,000, so uh, wonderful achievement again. So that's the service we'd like to continue to see our customers receiving. Um, just to highlight though, we did, um, and it'll probably come out in the next month's report, have two gas bottles dumped into our domestic waste bins, so luckily they were picked up by the drivers with the CCTV cameras, but obviously that's a dangerous outcome and we've had uh, recent fires in our trucks where uh, cylinders have been put in, so just a reminder out there to the community, obviously, to watch what they're putting in the bins. And if you need education, go to our uh, go to our website to have a look. Um, and the other thing, just the budget. So uh, we don't have the final end of year figures, but uh, looking like the waste budget is going to come in close to its revised budget for the year. Other than that, happy to take any questions, Your Worship. Thank you, Director. Questions for the Director, Councillor Bonaventura. Just in, <coughs> in relation to the waste tonnages at Hogan's Pocket. Um, has a director any idea what's driving that commercial and industrial waste up? Like this time, with us getting a bit of a boost in the uh, building industry, we thought it would have been the uh, the construction and demolition that would have jumped more so. But uh, there's been a continual rise the last three months, and it's, it's sort of uh, yeah. quite three, high. Three years Oh, I think it's just a local economy. We're seeing a lot of building activity. With the CND waste, uh, I think what we're seeing is we're not seeing as many tonnages come to Hogan Pocket because there's alternative options for the market. So we would expect that overall those tonnages are up, but we're just not seeing them coming through the gate, which is exactly the model we wanted to go to. So if people are starting to look at the CND waste and being able to um, bring that out and reuse it, that's, that's a good outcome for the community. Another question to Councillor Bonaventure. Just in relation to that, I just asked the director maybe to take on notice that uh, maybe we can look at what options there would be available to try and reduce commercial and industrial waste or look at what's in that material coming in so as possibly there is a way to start to divert or, or to be able to reduce that quantity from continuing to rise the way it is. So just wouldn't Thanks, take Councillor Bonaventure. Yep. Other, other questions? Councillor Mann. Yes, I did have one. Um, electronic page 95, um, a biological factor which resulted in an injury. So I just wanted a little bit more information on that. Right. Yeah, again, Your Worship. Yeah, um, that was an incident where we had an employee go to our materials recovery facility. Um, they'd recently had an eye operation and there was irritation from the, the dust at the site. So uh, we did do a review of the site and did find that um, in terms of the contract, the cleanliness wasn't probably at the standard that it should have been. So we've taken appropriate action and the, and the uh, contract has responded. So. Thank you. Very That's good. good. Other questions? Thank you, Director. Somebody would like to move the adoption of the report? Councillor Green moves. Councillor Bonaventura seconds. Councillor Green? Certainly no, thank you. Councillor Bonaventura, did you have to speak to the report? <coughs> thank you, Worship. Just uh, as you well know, Your Worship, it is pleasing to note that the Great Northern Cleanup will again go ahead this year on the 12th and 13th of September. And uh, this date will avoid school holidays 
and that generally ensures that we have the assistance of school children for the event. It's always a pleasure to work beside them as they get a hands-on experience of the effect of litter in our region. And while it may be a bit early, I uh, ask councillors to put that date aside in their diaries because it is also a good opportunity for us to get an understanding of uh, the type of rubbish that is dumped within our region. And one other, if I may, just um, the same as uh, the director has stated, I too have spotted the waste trucks around with the Discover Mackay logo on there. And it is great, it is promoting our region. Um, but why stop there? I would like the director to consider the possibility of working with other councils and seeing if we get that logo placed on some of their trucks in other council areas. This way, not only Mackay sees what we have to offer, but other regions throughout Queensland would have that opportunity as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Bonaventura. Are there other speakers to the motion? Nobody speaking against. None of the speakers. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. Thank you. So, 11.3.2 uh, is the ECI report for water, Director. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, again, uh, I'd like to highlight uh, the safety performance, especially for this area, which is a high-risk area. So, uh, two years now, now with no LTI. So, um, great leadership and outcomes in relation to safety in relation to that program. Um, good to see the My H2O um, registration for each of the target. And I know the, the councillors here are very strong supporters of that, so that's greatly appreciated. Uh, we continue to look for ways to try and encourage more people to be able to get online and not wait till they actually have an issue or a large bill and try and be a bit more proactive. So we'll continue to push that uh, in the coming months. Um, really wanted to highlight the positive uh, customer survey results. So um, again, uh, an area that's a, a strong focus. And I'd like to um, highlight that this area has identified this as a continued focus and rec recently redeployed someone into a first responder type role. So they go out and do the initial assessment of the job, talk to the customer, talk about the priority. So it's really good to see um, the highlight of the customer focus coming to the fore there, trying to, to be on the front foot when we engage with our customers. Um, I'd like to probably identify something that we don't pick up on, which is our drinking water compliance. So it's really fundamentally what the business is about, so providing safe and reliable water. So we probably bypass it a little bit that uh, month on month we get um, meet all our uh, requirements around regulation, but you know it's really those staff that continue to do the, the outstanding work all the time. So recognise those people. Um, the other one I probably wanted to highlight is uh, we had a recent issue with a 900 sewer rising main where we had some damage and just recognise our professionalism of our crews and being able to respond to that. So they were out there, worked through till about two o'clock in the morning to undertake a, a repair, did it in a well-planned, safe manner. So it's really reassuring to know that when we have those situations arise that we have the type of uh, employees that are experienced enough to be able to handle that and uh, doing a great job. So. Have you taken further questions, man? Director, I think you should take back to your staff, uh, for, for you and all of your staff, our congratulations on that customer survey result. 94% of people saying very good or good. That is outstanding. So congratulations from, uh, from us as a council. Are there questions for the Director? Councillor Bonamatura. Just on page 121, um, the graph there shows a rapid rise and the number of days to fix leaks on residential properties, getting up to almost 80 days. Um, I note the director believes the return to work after COVID could be a possible reason. I must, must say I'm, I'm not as confident as, as, as he is on this because our lowest point was December last year when everybody was busy. So the question really is, director, have we got another way of getting the message out to residents? And Because uh, the delay is costing them money, not us. It's, is right there on. another way to get a message out there to them? Yeah, through your worship. But I think it's something we're trying to um, grapple with ourselves, councillor. So trying to get the understanding and importance out there. So in some respects, we're doing what we can by alerting the customer to the leak. And I think sometimes it depends on the extent of that leak. Um, the reality is the price of water is probably one of the cheapest products you can actually buy anywhere in the world. So sometimes there might be a price point that, that people see before they need to react or sometimes it might be the difficulty in trying to, to find 
the leak. So I think there might be some opportunity to work with some plumbers or to do a bit more work to identify where potential leaks may be so customers can go to that point first to have a look. And then if it's more complicated, maybe bring in a, a plumber or something to look for something. But it's certainly something we're conscious of and trying to work with our community to obviously improve those results. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Further questions? Somebody would like to move the report's adoption. Councillor Mann moves, seconded by. Councillor Hassan, Councillor Mann. Thank you, Worship. Um, look, as I always do, I'd like to mention um, safety in this, um, in this department. No LTIs for June or the year-to-date period and only one asset incident. So that is really commendable as far as I'm concerned. There's a learning from that incident, I'm sure. Um, but I'd like to thank the Director and all staff for the continued focus. I believe that the, um, the culture is being driven from the top down, which is really important. Um, there was a number of Facebook posts during the month, and one I was, that I thought was very relevant was how to read your water meter video, and that attracted 46 views. I, um, I like those posts, and I think that that's something that possibly we could continue as well, and I think people relate to those. Um, I also had down to mention the customer survey results, so I think it's outstanding. And um, council staff often draw criticism. I think it's commendable. They interact so well with our, with our public and, and our customers, and I'd like to ask the director to pass on our thanks as well. Thank you very much. Speaker against. Any other speakers? Councillor Bella speaking for. Yeah. <coughs> um, when we look at uh, 5.1 regulatory compliance, um, our drinking water has to um, meet the, uh, the Act. And when we look at um, what our target is and where we actually end up, we, we've met target and better uh, for a heck of a long time. The other thing is when you look at the sampling we do, very few of those samples fall under the aesthetic parameter, which is a very different thing to you know, what it has to be for a health and safety point of view. Now what you've got to consider is council, every drop of water council produces meets this standard and how much of the water is actually drunk and how much we use for various other activities. Now, I believe that what it highlights is the lengths we go to for the people in our region to provide something which, um, you know, obviously they need, they deserve and whatever, but we do it in such a broad sense for so much volume, it's unbelievable. And when you think about that, you start to realise just how much effort goes into providing you know, something of such a high standard right across the community. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thanks, Councillor Bada. Any other speakers? No other speakers, I'll put the report for adoption. Those in favour? Any against? It's carried, thank you. 11.4.1 is the Org Services Monthly Review for... No, it's not. <laughs> I've uh, skipped over one. I should, have, I should have woken up and thank you, you're still there, Director. Okay, the ECI report for transport and drainage. How about we do that one, Director? Good idea, thank you, Mayor. Um, so again, just highlighting safety. So um, 14 incidents for the month, so we still see a number of incidents being recorded in civil ops. Uh, we had the one LTI that was back in July last year, so no LTI since then, but obviously that was still a significant LTI and that employee still not returned to work. So it just goes to uh, reassure the importance of our employee safety because one incident that we think can easily occur can have a significant impact on both the employee, the team and the organisation. Um, just to highlight special maintenance work that we're doing at the moment in our drains, so now's the ideal time to be able to get into our drains, so we're undertaking work, so we're doing work at Channelworth Drive and we've done some revegetation uh, on Dennis Street, Creel Street and Ray Street. There is a current impact depending on some drains and where they're located in relation um, to needing to get a DA approval to do pruning works, because under our current condition, if they're tidal and have an impact we can only do the base on one side we need to keep one one side we can't clear so we're currently going through a DA process at the moment to try and get approval to uh, uh, be able to undertake more program work in relation to those drains impacted. Uh, the resealing of the city centre footpath pavers was completed and we previously discussed that. Um, we're out for a stormwater and sewer relining tender we've combined the packages to try and get some efficiencies 
and also looking to lock into a two plus one option year so then we can obviously have the flexibility to try and get the work done again in the best part of the year so that type of work is ideally done now so trying to move away from the council budget cycle where we have to wait for an approval go to tender so we can actually program those works to get the most efficient outcome during the middle of the year. Uh, again, customer survey results were very strong for civil operations, so obviously a little bit more difficult in their response and intervention levels and timing, but it's good to see there still remains a strong focus in the program to continue to improve. Uh, and asset management, so again, we're still being uh, focusing on the asset cleanse, how that impacts in relation to new assets coming online in relation to depreciation and obviously close out of either donated or capital works jobs so we can capitalise jobs as quickly as we can once they've been completed. And just lastly, given this my last opportunity to be up here before the CEO leaves, I'd just like to recognise um, the CEO, so his leadership and support in the past four and a half years and just a personal support for me, so thank you. Thank you very much, Director. Are there questions for the Director? Councillor Mann. I do have one on um, electronic page 136 where the electricity budget or street light budget $177,000 over, sorry, street light costs $177,000 over budget. So I asked if it was a timing issue or is it something we can correct in future? Uh, yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, it's, just, it's a accrual issue that was, uh, wasn't properly accounted for, so we're still showing it as accrual coming in where we actually had paid the account. So we have had a look at the end of financial year figures now uh, with period 13, and we're actually forecasting the coming 17,000 under budget, so. Thank you. Good question, Councillor May. Um, and just a question in regards to, and I don't know whether it fits here or it fitted with the waste report, but I'll ask it here. In regards to the um, Hogan's Pocket Road and the, and the um, trial that we're doing with the um, sand, the glass mm. finds, is that it, will that be reported back through um, ECI at some stage as to how that trial is progressing? Directly. Yeah, through your worship. Yeah, um, we're certainly happy to bring that back as a separate paper to councillors or include it in the next uh, monthly waste report. Um, uh, it's probably more sitting in the waste side because they were the ones that um, administered the work in relation to the work. So happy to update that at the next monthly meeting or if we've got updated data, send that out uh, independently to councillors. Thank That'll be you. Good. Yep. That'll be good. Further questions? No further questions? Uh, Councillor Bollinger, yes, you've got a question. <clears throat> uh, just on page 138, 138, yeah. Open drain maintenance. Like, uh, uh, as the director talked about, having to uh, get a permit to clean it, there will obviously be a fairly high cost in, in doing that, and of course it involves machines and drains, and the photo that's in the report looks very, very good. Um, my question is, how long between cleaning events where we've got those sorts of drains? Because I understand it would be rather costly unless you can tell me that, no, there's a cheap way of doing it. But how long between events of cleaning and, and the bottom of those drains? Yeah, Director. Th through your worship, but, um, I'm not exactly sure if we have a set time for each drain. So normally it's, uh, uh, it's a go, go around and, and undertake a, a, a visual inspection and then prioritise from there. So. They'll certainly be on a program that might be every couple of years, but depending on, um, I suppose, the drain and its location and its amenity, there might be ones that are on annual review to go through. But normally we would undertake an inspection and then prioritise from there. Follow-up question. Councillor Bowman, your follow-up? Uh, yeah, there was also another photo there of the, uh, the Black Street drain relining works. And I noticed the vegetation on one side and not on the other. Will we deliberately leave it that way so it's a lot easier to clean? Um, I pers that would be my personal preference, but will we leave it that way? Director? Yeah, um, through your worship, I'll probably have to take that one on notice. I don't think that one's tied. Also, it looks to me like that's been a deliberate uh, measure to leave the, the trees that are established on the, on the road side of that, but I'll, I'll clarify that and come back to you. That would be good, thank you. Your Thanks, Councillor Barmatura. Any further questions for the Director? Would somebody like to move the report's adoption? Councillor May moves. Councillor Mann seconds. Councillor May. Thank you very much, Your Worship. So in this department, there's an enormous amount of work and a, and a wide variety of work that happens um, from, from drains, as we've heard, to, to sheeting of gravel roads and maintaining of shoulders, a whole range of activities there for the month. Um, they continue to deliver in, uh, month after month on that. 
You can see also in the report there that the city centre, the, the footpaths have been resealed, which is a, a, a good job done as well. So um, a very good report and, and the, the teams are, are working really, really well and it's uh, great to see. I'd just like to make one comment around the permits and that that are required for drain cleaning. And, and we hear it all the time in um, state government politics where they want to cut the red tape, but here we find ourselves having to apply for a DA permit to clean out a drain, which is, is just ludicrous when you think about it. And, and I, I don't know whether it's something that this council should perhaps um, consider writing to the department about and, and protesting about that because it, it creates costs on our side, it holds up the works, and, and the customers, the, the community, are really the ones that pay in the end. So just um, yep. highlight that. Certainly happy to do that. Um, thank you very much, Councillor May. Speaker against? Are there any other speakers? No other speakers? I'll put the motion for adoption. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Thank you. Now we'll try the Org Services monthly review for June 2020. Director. Good morning, Your Worship. Um, it's been another busy month for Org Services Department during June. I'm pleased to say that safety continues to be a focus of the department, with no LTIs reported since 2017-18. In fact, no incidents were recorded at all for the department for the month. Some highlights for the month include shared services continue to achieve high levels of customer satisfaction for external interactions, while information services achieve continuing high levels of internal customer satisfaction at 99%. The 2020-21 budget was adopted by Council in June, and this involves an incredible amount of work, so thanks to everyone involved. The MARC recorded high attendance figures in June, with more than 2,000 attending the aquatic facility, while more than 4,000 um, using the athletics facility. The COVID shutdown has allowed um, some maintenance and repair work to be undertaken at several of our facilities, including some work done at the MEC. During June, Fleet took delivery of a number of replacement plant items, including trailers, mowers, slashes and trucks. This ensures that our fleet is maintained at a high standard. A special mention to payroll, accounts payable, procurement and financial services team who have been very busy with the end of financial year task, the Accountants New Year, and I want to thank them for their efforts. I have to answer any questions. Thank you very much, uh, Director, and once again, you know, an outstanding result from the customer survey for your team, so please take our congratulations back. We're very, very proud of the staff that we have here at the Mackay Regional Council, and that's reflected by the customer survey results. Uh, so thank you very much. Are there questions for the Director? Once again, you get off really lightly, Director, so... Thank you very thank much. You. Good report. Would somebody like to move the uh, report's adoption? Councillor Mann moves. Seconded by Councillor Jones. Councillor Mann. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to mention safety, as I always do. Um, no LTIs and no incidents for June, so I think that's very commendable. There's, there's some, a lot of high-risk activities in this department, so well done to everybody. Um, and it just shows this, the safety culture, again, is being driven from the top down, which it needs to be. Um, the department continues to work on business improvement projects with 1,200 processes identified as being out of date and actions identified to rectify this. So well done again. We can always improve, and it's just great that the staff can see that and are willing to, to improve all our processes. I wanted to mention the um, outstanding results for external customer service. Uh, KPIs met or exceeded in each case, and the customer surveys are overwhelmingly positive, so that's really good. And I also wanted to make mention of our IT support program. They continue to meet or exceed their KPIs, often largely forgotten, are responsible for making sure that everything's running properly, that we can turn on a computer and it all works, and don't often get a mention. And let, so that on top of not skill shortages within the area, the region, uh, for their program, but also cyber security, they have a huge job and I thank them for, for um, the work that they do. Thank you very much, Councillor Mann. Speaker against, any other speakers? Councillor Bonaventura. Thank you, Worship. Just in relation to um, our external customer service and our grades of service, and I know we're in the green at 55%, which is great, but I raise that because uh, of the following little story um, about a few days ago, I had a phone call from an elderly gentleman wanting to know how he would put a temporary fence around a bit of uh, unused road reserve. 
And I said, look, just ring customer service. And after I got off the phone, I thought, well, poor fella, you know, like, and, and poor customer service, who obviously, it's not the request they get every, every day. And I thought, well, they'll find that a bit difficult. And about 24 hours later, I thought, I'll ring him back and see how he got on. And he was so rapt to say that customer service knew exactly what he wanted, were able to uh, find the, the form for him, helped him fill it in over the, over the phone, and uh, going to send it out to him to sign. So to the director, if you wouldn't mind passing on to the call centre, my appreciation for the effort they continue to do. Hey? Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Monomajura. Any other speakers? No other speakers? I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Are you against? The motion's carried. Thank you. 11.4.2, the adoption of council policies. Uh, we have uh, policies uh, 42, 4 and 69 uh, up for adoption. They've been circulated. We've had no comments or questions come back. Do you have a question, Councillor Bobinger? I do, Your Worship, and I do apologise for, for, for this, but just in relation to the, uh, the nature strip footpath po policy, I notice on 5.5, uh, I think it's the second dot point, says um, slashing be restricted metres shoulder, the typical width of slashing, one to two metres. And I just question why such an arrow width of slashing, and uh, doesn't this force pedestrians closer to where vehicles are? And is this the same rule uh, in rural areas? So, uh, CEO. We'll have to take that on notice. I'm sorry we didn't give any, no one gave us any feedback to be sent around, so we'll have to take it on notice. And I, I do apologise for that, Your Worship. I was, um, and I don't know, I'll, I'll leave it to Council, but I probably wouldn't mind putting this policy or this one um, uh, laying this down just to have some more discussion on this area, because it is an area I get a lot of conversations from people going, you know, they only mowed to here, there's that little bit out there. It is an area, especially in urban areas, you know, those little rural areas such as, um, you know, Kalen and places like that often get the phone calls going, you know, why didn't the contractor mow a little bit wider? I understand why now, because he's only got a policy that says he only has to go one to two metres off the edge of the road, so... Uh, OK. But well, we circulate these policies for those, for those very reasons, uh, and we've had nothing back. So you would like to, uh, to move that we lay policy 004, the Nature Strip Footpath Road Verge Mowing on the table and consider the others. Yes. You move, somebody seconds. Councillor Jones seconds. Is there any need to speak to that? You've already spoken to it. I'll put that motion. Those in favour? Any against? Okay, the motion's lost. Uh, so, so those against? One, two, three, four, five, man, five, Townsend, six, and Hassan. Okay. We really don't want to be to have that to happen, and if there's a if there's a change to the policy, we we'll re review the policy. And our idea in circulating the policy is to so that we can get the questions answered, rather than putting up a policy for adoption that doesn't answer all the questions of councillors. So uh, if there's an if there's a need to come back and review that policy, we'll do that down the track. That's in three years, Your Worship. Is well, there if, three if, years? If, a, if you want to move a, uh, a notified motion to review the policy, we're going to review the policy. Okay, so are there any other questions around these policies? Okay, I'll uh, ask for someone to move the adoption of the policies. Councillor May moves. Councillor Hassan seconds. Councillor May. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? Councillor Bolger is against. against. Right. Thanks. Motion's carried. 9-2. All right, let's move on. Uh, the strategic financial report for the month of June. Uh, CEO. Well, we haven't been up to date, Mayor, so I just <laughs> wanted to tell you. Very good. First thing I want to say is um, I'll need to speak to the director who calls the end of financial year the accountant's new year. That's disturbing. <laughs> Usually New Year's a happy, fun time. Um, we'll have to work through that with the accountants because I'm not sure how you could reference new year. Happy Depends how they celebrate it up in that department. Yeah. Um, I'll, look, I'll be very quick. Obviously, this is a report. We're still finalising our accounts. What I will say is in the last a couple of days, through the director and the, and the work, is that we're now forecasting um, our, uh, our result to be around about a balanced budget. So um, that is with the depreciation impacts that I've mentioned previously. 
Um, the question should be, why has that changed so much? That's a good question. Uh, as COVID has created some more uncertainty around this space than normal, but um, there's been some ups and downs. We will go through that with the council. Um, I'd just like to say that result looks like that's what it's going to be there and thereabouts. Considering the year, the last three months, uh, the request that I provided to the directors to try to make sure our spend is representative of the circumstances, that is a fantastic result by the directors and the staff to make sure that our spending meets our expectation in a very rapidly moving environment. So I think that's a credit to the directors. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I say, it'll be formalised as we work through. It's unaudited, unaudited, so we need to just make sure we've got it all right. But I think that would be a great outcome. Thank you very much, CEO. Questions for the CEO? No questions for the CEO. Okay, so we'd like to move the adoption then of the financial report for the strategic financial report for the month of June. Councillor May moves, seconded by Councillor Englert. Councillor May. Thank you very much, Your Worship. I really just wanted to highlight, and I was going to say that the $500,000 um, deficit, which um, the CEO has just informed us, may, may change. So that's good news. Um, our project expenditure was down to about 84%, which really is reflective upon um, the delivery of some of those projects. Some have stopped altogether and some have not been able to be fulfilled as far as um, resourcing with um, equipment and, and um, machinery and that type of thing. So it's quite understandable in this um, trying time that we're, we're not um, going to achieve our 90 odd percent that we were aiming for in that particular part. Um, the MECC operations are, are only just beginning to be um, coming back online. We've seen enormous, um, I suppose, reduction in the services that we provide, um, the fees that we would, would get in from the, the operations of the MEC as well. So that's impacted on the, the financial results as well. And I think just to, to really highlight that, our fees and charges compared to our original budget are somewhat down, over $3,000 down on the original budget. Our interest income is also down by about $1,000 on, on the uh, original budget. And um, the grants and subsidies, which is pleasing, is up. So that, that is a good thing. So that, that um, on these figures, uh, really was a, a deficit of uh, around about $455,000. So, all in all, a very good result. And I know the enormous amount of work that goes into uh, preparing these figures and the managing of the accounts, um, particularly at the 30th of June, coming to the end of the financial year. And our staff and the director have done a fantastic job in, uh, in managing all of that uh, under these trying circumstances because with the, the COVID-19 um, impacts that we've had to, to manage and, and to account for is no easy task. So congratulations to them. Thank you very much. Councillor May, Speaker against. Are there any other speakers? No other speakers. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Any against? The motion is carried. There's no petitions to receive today. There's no tenders to consider. There's no consider uh, consideration of notified motions. Public participation we don't have. Any late business from councillors? No late business from councillors? We have some confidential reports, uh, councillors, that I think we should move into a, a confidential mode right now to consider the uh, the number of reports we've got. Would somebody like to move that we close the meeting to the public? Moved by Councillor Englert, seconded by Councillor Mann. Those in favour? Any against? Motion is carried.
Okay, we're uh, back live and uh, we have uh, some confidential reports to move right now. 17.1, the draft minutes of the Priority Development Area Advisory Committee. Moved by Councillor May, second by Councillor Engler. Those in favour? Any against? The motion is carried. 17.2, the approved concessions under the Facilitating Development Mackay Region Policy for 2020. Councillor Mann moves. Second by Councillor Englert. Those in favour? Any against? Motion's carried. 17.4, the Legal Services Report. 17.3, the approved sponsorship under the Invest Mackay Events and Con Conference Attraction Program for June 2020. Councillor Green moves. Seconded by Councillor Townsend. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. 17.4, the Legal Services Report for June 2020. Moved by Councillor Englert, seconded by Councillor Hassan. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. 17.5, the Mackay Sugar Limited Water Consumption Adjustment. Moved by Councillor Seymour, seconded by Councillor Mann. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. And 17.6, the recovery of outstanding rates. Somebody like to move? No. Moved by Councillor May, seconded by Councillor Hassan. Those in favour? Any against? The motion's carried. Uh, thank you, councillors. Thank you, CEO. Thank you, directors. I declare the meeting closed.